Right. Hello and uh, and welcome. This is uh, week two, Monday's lecture for Stats 21. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, first things first, um, I want you to pull the changes from the upstream repository. So I have gone and added uh, lecture 2-1 to my re remote repository. But you, the student, and again, this, uh, this uh, virtual machine over here, represents kind of a student account. Um, if you check your repository, it probably doesn't have the current stuff. So I'm going to kind of check in, uh, go into there. And so indeed, if I list off um, the, the things, I just have lectures 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3. I don't have lecture 2-1 yet. So uh, what I want to do is I want to pull the newest content from the upstream repository. So I'm going to do git pull upstream space main. And when I do that, it will go to the upstream repository at Smiles Chen, and it will pull those changes. Uh, and, and we can see, oh yeah, all right, now we have uh, lecture 2-1, all right? And then, um, and so now if I check what's the contents of my lecture, now I have lecture 2-1 inside there. And if I want to uh, kind of check um, my own kind of at the student repository on GitHub, um, I can go over here and and if I log into my student repository, I don't have anything here. So what I need to do is I need to kind of push the changes from my local virtual machine to my remote repository and so I will just do git push and I do that um, and that has pushed the changes from my local computer to github and if I refresh github now it will have um, it will have 2-1 here okay all right so there we go um, and let's go ahead and um, um, Let's open this up. So I'm going to go back to my me, the professor's account. I'm going to lo load up Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Space Lab. We'll get this started up, and we will take a look at uh, today's lecture, um, which is titled uh, Lecture 2-1, Basic Data Types and Variables. Um, just as I go through this, I'm going to go and uh, clear all of the outputs on my cells, but you don't have to do that. You can just kind of follow along. Okay, so um, I just kind of want to talk about um, some of the basic data types that exist in Python, which uh, will be uh, important for us. Um, I have to uh, give credit where it is due. Uh, a lot of today's content comes directly from our textbooks Think Python. And, uh, and also an, another great resource is a whirlwind tour of, uh, of Python. Um, and uh, and this, this information comes from there. So um, if we think about base, type, <coughs> base Python, there are different types of data um, that, uh, that we uh, work with and, uh, and frequently use. Um, other important data types also uh, exist, and we will use them, but uh, they require the loading of additional libraries like NumPy, that gives us the NumPy array, and Pandas, which gives us the Pandas data frame, um, which will be important for us. But, uh, but for now, um, just kind of the, the data, uh, data types that we'll be working with are you know, things like strings and integers and floats and booleans. Um, so, you know, I think we're familiar with all of these things. Strings would be our, you know, your text data integers are basically your whole numbers, positive and negative. Um, you've got uh, floats, um, which are things that have decimal values. And again, it's all stored on the computer. <clears throat> so they are floating point numbers, which are not the same thing as real numbers. Um, real numbers are uh, basically, you know, there's infinitely many of them and we can't store infinitely many values here. Um, Booleans are the true-false, you know, your logical value. In R we call them logical values. Uh, here they're Booleans. And then we have none, okay? The none type is uh, used for the none data value and that's 
basically um, in R the equivalent thing would be null something that doesn't exist okay we also have these important data structures uh, like lists and tuples and ranges these are all kind of iterable um, uh, sequences that we can do um, dictionaries are also very important we also have sets and bytes um, but uh, we'll definitely give attention to uh, to these things uh, lists tuples and dictionaries and things like that um, you can always ask what is the type um, what kind of type of data is uh, is something just by using the function type so if I have type quote two, the quotes indicate that it would be um, string data so if I do this um, and I run that shift enter to run my command um, I get uh, it says it's a string okay um, sorry let me uh, kind of go through type uh, 2 by itself is going to be an integer it's going to say it's an int uh, floats would have a decimal point so we have a type on 2.0 is a float um, true the boolean value for true is spelled capital T lowercase r-u-e uh, which is different from the way we spell true in in R, in R it is all caps true, T R all caps T R U E, but in Python it's capital T, lowercase R U E, and that will say it's a Boolean. And then um, the none type is, um, I'm sorry, the none value, the keyword none, N O N E, capital N O N E, uh, comes back as none type. Um, we can do some mathematical operations, um, and so these are the mathematical operators. Uh, and these are the only mathematical operators that exist in base Python. There's there's a lot of things that we would kind of expect, things like square root or whatever. Um, that doesn't exist in base Python. You can extend it. Uh, it's, you know, one of the primary libraries is the math library. Um, but, you know, in base Python, the, the operators we have, things are like, uh, you know, add and subtract and multiply and divide. You have uh, integer floor division. So, you know, if you do something like, uh, I don't know, 10 uh, slash slash 3, okay, then you'll get floor division and you'll just get 3, okay? This is the modulo operator. This will give you the integer remainder um, after you do the integer floor division, okay? Uh, x star star y is uh, exponentiation, so that's x to the power of y, uh, and then you also have the absolute value thing. Okay, so I could say um, x is 10, y is 5, um, and I can say, hey, what's the type on x and what's the type on y? Both of these things are going to be integers. Okay, if you want it to be a float, you have to put in a decimal point or a dot to indicate that. Um, with z, I can do uh, 10 plus 5. If I add two integers, the result is going to be an integer. z is going to be 15, obviously. Um, if you take two integers and you multiply them together, so I'm going to have x is 10 and y is 5, and then I'm going to multiply 10 times 5, the integers 10 times 5, to get z, z is going to be 50, and it will also be an integer, okay? So uh, z is the integer 50, okay? If I do 10 divided by 5, x divided by y, whenever you do division, the result is always going to be a float, always going to be a float even if you know 10 divided by 5 is 2 2 is an integer but in Python 10 divided by 5 will always give you the floating value of 2 so type on Z here is going to be a float and when Python displays integers I mean sorry displays floating point numbers it always includes a dot even if it doesn't need it so to kind of indicate that this is not the integer 2 it's going to print out 2.0, 2.0, okay? Meanwhile here, I've got x as 10.0. That 10.0 is going to make x a float. Uh, y is the integer 5. So I can ask, you know, what is the type on x? Indeed, it's a float. Um, what's the type on uh, y? Indeed, it's uh, an integer. Um, and anytime you do operations between floats and integers, um, the result is going to be a float. So 10.0 plus 5 will give us the uh, the float 15.0, and 10.0 times 5 will give us the float 50.0. Okay, so that's what we have. Um, 
floating point numbers um, have certain kind of precisions. You know, we have uh, we have a maximum value. This is the largest number that we can store on the computer. Be uh, anything larger than this is considered to be infinity. Um, and so, you know, that's it's a it's a big number. Ten to the you know, 1.797 times 10 to the 308 power, um, 308, which is a which is a very big number, but uh, but again, a far cry from an infinity. Okay, so um, so if I say 2.0 raised to the 1023, that's going to give us a, a pretty big number, 8.9 times 10 to the 307, um, and I can do a bunch of things like 2 times. 2 to the 1023 plus 2 to the 1022 and 2 to the 1021 and that gets us uh, you know closer and closer to the absolute max value I would have to kind of do plus 2 to the you know 1020 1020 and all the way down to uh, I don't know whatever 1023 minus 51 is or something um, all of these things if I tried to do something like 2 to the 1024 this is going to be too big it's going to overflow and give us um, uh, an error okay so if you try to do this uh, we get an overflow error it says the result is too large this is just too big for us to represent in floating point number um, basically anything larger than the floating point max um, gets stored as infinity and Python recognizes that here we're hitting up the um, the results and so it gives us an overflow error okay um, Another side effect of floating point numbers is that they do not work the way real numbers do. Um, I explained some of this in my class for Stats 102A. Some of you have taken that class, and so you've seen some of these examples. Um, but if you haven't and you're not quite familiar with floating point numbers, um, you know weird things happen. Okay, so. Um, I, I guess uh, the the comparable analogy is if you have like an old calculator, okay? If you have an old calculator, and if I ask you, hey, what's 10 divided by 3? You'd say 3 and a third. And I say, what is that multiplied by 3? 3 and a third times 3 gives us back 10, right? 10 divided by 3 times 3, take that result, multiply by 3, you should get back 10. But on an old school calculator, what do you get? If I do 10 divided by 3, um, the calculator says it's 3.33333, okay? That seems reasonable. And if I do, um, if I take that number and I multiply it by 3, the result is going to be uh, 9.9999999, okay? Which is not the same thing as 10. And so we end up with stuff like that, except it's a little bit, um, but it's binary. Um, so anyway, let me just show you what happens, okay? Here I have a is 1 plus 2 divided by 10. So a is going to be uh, basically 3 tenths, 0.3. Here I have b is 1 tenth plus 2 tenths, so 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Um, b should also be 0.3. And if I say, hey, is a equal to b? And the check, uh, the, the symbol for testing equality is equal, equal. If I do, I ask, is A equal equal to B? It comes back and says false, which feels weird, right? Because in real numbers, these two things are exactly the same. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 over 10 is 3 tenths, 0.3. B is 1 tenth, 0.1, plus 2 tenths, 0 0.2. 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 gives us 0.3. These two things should be exactly the same, but the computer says they are not equal. And what's going on is um, I can format uh, format this value um, to print out 20 decimal places. And when you do 1 plus 2 divided by 10, you get this value 0 0.2999999999 whatever, okay? Something very close to 0 0.3, but not exactly 3, 0 0.3, okay? And similarly with B, if you do 1 tenth plus 2 tenths and you add that, you get something very close to 0.3, but not exactly 0 0.3. 0 0.3000000, and then there's some leftover numbers, 441. Okay, and um, and it's kind of like on this calculator when I do 10 divided by 3, I can't actually represent the number three and a third perfectly. 
I get something you know that's very close, 3.33333, but it's not exactly three and one third. And similarly, the in binary, you can't actually represent the number one one tenth or three tenths perfectly. Um, it's kind of like uh, you know you're gonna have like this zero one one zero one one zero one one repeating forever, and at some point you got to truncate it, and you get so you end up getting something very close to point three, but not exactly point three. Okay. Um, so anyway, the, don't worry about this command at this moment in time. Um, there is stuff about uh, formatting strings using the dot format, um, string format operators and stuff, but um, uh, that's that's that. Okay. So, um, you know, you have uh, workarounds, um, and one of the workarounds is uh, this operator is close, <laughs> okay? Um, and we can ask, um, and it comes from the, the math library, so we have to import the math library, and we can say, is A close to B? Um, and it says, yes, that is close. The problem with this is, what if somebody actually wanted the value 3.33333 and not 3 and a third? Um, you won't be able to tell the difference between those two things. You're going to say, yep, those are close um, to each other, and so we're going to treat them maybe not exactly the same, but, um, but that's basically what this is close um, function does. Okay, let me go ahead and give you your uh, first view quiz answer, which is the letter B. B as in bear. B is your first view quiz answer. B as in bear. <clears throat> okay. Um, in Python, uh, integers have uh, um, are unbounded. Okay. They use variable amounts of memory, and so you could have really big numbers with great precision. So I can raise two to the ten twenty three and it will calculate it and it's a really big number and 2 to the 1024 I can calculate that um, and I get you know one seven nine seven six nine three one three you know really uh, like a really big number so you know whereas floating point numbers we could not do 2.0 uh, where did it go 2.0 raised to the 1024 this produces as an overflow error Okay, but uh, with integers, I can do that. I can even do two to the ten twenty-five, and uh, and we're taking this and we're squaring this. Is, this takes up uh, you know more space in memory, okay? But um, but it's there, and uh, and you can you can calculate these things, okay? Um, you can uh, put in something like nine and square it. So nine squared gives us eighty-one, and, and that's going to be an integer. If I did say 9.0 and I square it, then I would get 81.0. So the it can, uh, exponentiation can result in a float or an integer depending on the in input. Now, we don't have a square root function in base Python. If I just try to do square root of 9, um, I get uh, an error. It says name error. Square root is not defined. Um, one thing I want you guys to do is as you encounter error messages, in Python, don't just throw up your hands and say, ah, there's an error, I don't know what, what went wrong. Try to read the error and try to understand what the error is telling us. And so in this case, um, it's saying there's a name error. You called for something, you, you asked for something that goes by the name of square root, and I don't know what that name refers to. Um, and that's because in base Python, there's no square root function. Now, now there is, um, the math module that does have a square root function, but but right now we haven't, um, we're not referring to it by that name. Um, but you have a workaround, and you can raise things to the one half power, and you can do nine raised to the 0. 0.5, and that will give you the square root of uh, a three. Okay, and similarly, these things, values like pi, um, aren't don't exist. Uh, the x, um, the e function, and the trig functions don't exist in base Python. All of these come back with name errors saying that these names are not defined. Um, but we can use the math module, um, and we've already imported the math module, but I'll go ahead and import it again. And within the math module, you have a square root function. So you can do math.squareRoot. This is kind of the full name. 
of the thing and you say math.square root of 9 and it says oh that's 3 math.pi gives you the value 3.14159 um, math.exp of 2 this will give us um, you know e raised to the second power uh, and you can also do things like um, trig functions so you can say hey what is sine of pi, pi over 2 okay sine of pi over 2 is 1 so um, uh, you know, math math .sign, uh uses uh, radians. I think. Let me just see. Python math sign. Do we have the option to use degrees? Okay, so you can. Uh, there is a function called math .radians that will convert from degrees into radians. So, um, so you can do that. Um, but uh, math, uh, math.sign will always uh, deal with, uh, with, um, with radians. So if you want to do math. So, so you can do math.radians of, say, 90 degrees. And that will be how many, uh, you know, it's, you know, half, pi half radians, right? So then you can do math.sign of math.radians 90 degrees and you get that okay great um, okay uh, moving on our uh, let's talk about boolean types um, there are we have true cap all cap uh, sorry capital T lowercase r u e is uh, a boolean um, there's these are the that's the only accepted spelling of true um, if you put true in quotes it's a string if you type true any other way all caps true uh, it says that's not defined uh, capital T by itself not defined lowercase t not defined lowercase true not defined only capital T lowercase r u e okay anything else will result in an error same thing with false only capital F, lowercase a-l-s-e, um, is the only accepted spelling of false. Uh, we have strings. Um, with strings, um, we put them in quotes. You can use single quotes or double quotes. I have message one is, hello, how are you? Message two is single quotes, fine, um, that's fine. You can do something like, what is the length? This is going to be the number of characters which count um, spaces so one two three four five and hello exclamation space is seven another three is ten space is uh, 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 characters okay the number of characters including spaces or symbols or punctuation um, I think I showed this already but you know you could take um, Take a string and um, do some uh, quote multiplication with it, which just basically duplicates the string, uh, the string uh, multiple times and kind of puts them all together. Um, you can use uh, placeholders in strings and use them in conjunction with uh, variables or something like that. So here I'm going to create a variable called name. Name is going to carry the string value uh, miles. All right, and then here is a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a string that has placeholders. Placeholders exist inside these curly braces. So here it says, my name is curly brace name, and my school is curly brace school. This is kind of like, um, I don't know, sometimes you get uh, emails that says, uh, hello, first name, uh, you know, welcome to something, and, um, and that's like something went wrong and it was supposed to put in your name, you know, like Miles where it's supposed first name, but you know, something something went wrong. Um, but basically you can take a string and then you can um, do dot format and then you can put in, um, you know, where it says name, put in the variable, uh, the value Miles, which uh, has the value name, okay? Um, for school, put in the string uh, UCLA, okay? Um, and I can do that, and when I execute that, now it comes back, I get the string. My name is Miles, and my school is UCLA. That is the output of, uh, of this input when I do um, dot format. And basically, 
um, that's uh, what happened back here when I used uh, dot formats here it's just the entire thing was a placeholder <laughs> um, and then uh, this colon uh, dot 20 F is you know how uh, we format with you know a bunch of uh, uh, placeholders after the decimal and things like that and again um, you can always kind of reference um, more on the format operator for some of the different kinds of um, formats so you can do things like fixed point format and scientific format and things like that um, just uh, just stuff to uh, to try out and be aware of okay um, moving on we can um, assign values to names or variables okay um, this is done using the equal sign um, and I think this is pretty familiar to us you know in R you did the same thing except you used you know um, less than dash the little arrow you could also use the equal sign in R um, when you do this the name has to be on the left hand side um, and then the value that's being assigned to that name is on the right hand side okay when you assign something um, Python doesn't produce an output so if I do n equal to 5 nothing gets output to the screen um, later on I can ask Python to print out the value that comes in n and I can say print n and it will output 5 to the to the screen okay um, one thing to kind of keep in mind is that variables in Python um, are are pointers okay so if you contrast say uh, Python to a language like C or Java when you define a variable you're defining like a bucket that contains uh, that that that's able to store certain kinds of data so like in C you would do something like int and so you're declaring this bucket called X that's going to store integers and then you you know you put the value 4 in there and then if you try to um, put something that's not a integer in there um, you know different things could happen but you know you could get an error or you can just it just kind of truncates things so that it becomes a becomes an integer right um, and that's what we have in Python however we have just X equal to 4 um, what we're doing here is we are creating this value 4 it exists in uh, a location memory and then we're pre creating a, a pointer X and this X points to the thing in memory that contains the value 4 okay we don't have to declare variables in Python Python is kind of dynamically typed and so later on if I want to have this name X point to something else I can have it point to a completely different type okay nowhere along the way have we um, created a bucket that requires values of a certain type to go in there okay so uh, when we create the value 4 or we write the value 4 Python kind of creates its own kind of um, this this object which has the you know the, the value 4 that exists in memory and you know the name X points to that okay so um, if I run the following here uh, I can do X equal to 1 so I'm going to create the an object with the value 1 and X points to that later on I create another object which is a string that ha contains the value hello and then I'm going to say have X point to that and then I can create another list which has the values 1 2 3 and then I'm going to have the name X point to that and as we go on now I no longer have anything pointing to 1 and then later on I have no longer no longer have anything pointing to this string hello and so Python has what we call a garbage collector and it takes care of the memory and it says hey you know what nothing is referencing this uh, string that says hello it's not going to be used we have no way to kind of access this thing it's now considered garbage and it clears it frees up that space in memory whereas you know things like in C and stuff you kind of have to do some memory management and if you don't kind of clean up your um, these buckets that you create in memory then you know your your program starts taking up more and more and more memory and things can slow down and get clogged okay um, 
As far as name variable names go, you can choose almost anything to be a variable name. There's a couple rules. Um, names can have letters, numbers, and underscore characters. Those are the only kind of uh, symbols that are allowed. Um, no symbols other than the underscore are allowed. Um, names cannot start with a number. Uh, you can't put spaces in, um, in the name. And then uh, the name cannot be a Python keyword. And these are the keywords in Python. So you cannot name something false or none or true. And then these are also all of the other keywords. Uh, so you have things like if and else and as um, and for. And these are kind of all of these um, you know, important uh, keywords, OK? Um, you know, you have other functions that are defined, like type and um, things like that. But those are not keywords. And so you can just kind of create new, new functions and stuff that, uh, you know, just kind of, I guess, um, mask or su supplant uh, the other things. But these are keywords, and you know, your variable names cannot be that. Um, as you kind of write code and you program, um, you know, see to it yourself as uh, that you should try to think of good variable names. I often, in my examples, I use terrible variable names. I just use X and F and whatever. These are not good variable names. It's, it's actually um, kind of tough, depending on your situation, how to, um, you know, how to come up with good good variable names. Um, the goal is that you want your code to be readable and understandable without having to go back to the line where you did the assignment operation and to remember like what this variable is supposed to represent. OK? Um, here is uh, a little thing that has, you know, what are some practices for good, uh, good variable names, OK? Um, and so uh, some of these principles I've, I've put in here. Um, but the basic things are um, be clear and concise um, with your variable names. Uh, your er variable names uh, should be in English. And again, you know, this is very kind of uh, ethno and Anglo-centric, um, but the default language for coding and programming is English. Um, I always make this recommendation for uh, when you do things in R, and I think Python, it's less of an issue, but you know, in R, you can localize your error messages, and um, I don't. I think Python, the error message is default in English, but things like that. But generally, just set your coding languages to be English, and that way, if you encounter an error message, um, you can search for that error message on Google or the internet, and um, and if your error message is in English, you will find. Um, matches, OK? You will find uh, lots of matches and lots of resources for, for solving that um, versus if you have it in a different thing, OK? Um, and then as far as uh, na naming your variables, um, you should just stick to kind of uh, ASCII characters. Technically, you can have, uh, you know, little, uh, you know, dots and stuff over your letters and accents and things like that. Um, and that is technically an allowed variable name, but it's um, it's uh, not recommended, OK? So here's uh, here's some examples of variable names that are not good, just because it's hard to know what they represent. S is 101533, or SID is 101533. Um, this is kind of hard. On the other thing, if you have something that's too long, Finnish Meteorological Institute Observation Station Identification Number, that's just too long and impractical for us to kind of uh, use okay, um, so variable names that would be better would be something like uh, FMI station ID. Okay, this uh, that's easier um, or FMI station ID. Um, you have snake case, uh, sometimes called pothole case, where you use underscores between the words, um, and then you also have camel case. Camel case basically separates the words by using a capital letter. So capital S or for station and capital I for ID or whatever, you know, things like that. Lower camel case just means the first letter is lowercase and upper camel case just means the first letter is uh, 
capital letter. All right, let me go ahead and give you your second view quiz answer, which is the letter B. Letter B for our second view quiz answer. All right, there's a few other uh, naming conventions, um, and again, so some additional um, things that uh, these are just recommendations. These are additional readings, I guess, supplemental reading that uh, um, you know maybe you, you might want to consider here, um, and that is the name itself should give a hint about the underlying data structure. Okay. So um, if you have a list or an array that contains multiple values, the name, it's better to use a plural name, OK? So um, if you have a list here that contains apple, banana, and orange in it, um, a not great name would be fruit, OK? A better name would be fruits, OK? having plural fruits to kind of give indication that the underlying structure contains more than one thing, right? Okay. Um, if if the, the data structure contains strings, then having something that indicates that it contains strings is, uh, could be handy, right? Like, Fruit names is even better because the word names there indicates, kind of implies that there's going to be strings. Uh, the S implies that, you know, the plural indicates that there's going to be multiple one, multiple ones. Um, things like um, if you wanted to have fruit quantity, right? So, um, so fruit. Um, Quants, okay, this would be maybe a list of values, okay? Um, that would be something like that, right? Fruit, fruit quantities, or uh, I don't know how how, how you want to kind of um, to kind of indicate that we've got multiple uh, multiple of these things, right? Um, so these are just just different kind of ways to you know, come up with a name that, that's going to be a little bit helpful by, I don't know, uh, giving, giving some insight and clues there, okay? Um, if the variable is going to contain uh, Boolean values, then um, it, is, it is better to write the variable name as a yes or no question, okay? So rather than saying selected is true or write is true or something, um, you want to do something like is selected true, can write, has fruit, um, um, uh, and that would be uh, kind of kind of useful, right? Um, and and that way you can kind of plug these things and put it inside um, like an if statement. So you know later on you can do if um, is selected, then you know print. You know this this one is the one selected and stuff like that, right? Um, and that that just makes kind of your reading uh, a little bit easier, right? So if if it's selected, um, you know, and you can kind of say you know if that's true or false, then uh, then you can kind of go off of there, right? And <laughs> and just a future that kind of thing, don't don't do stuff like that, right? If is selected is, is equal to true. Um, you know, there's no point. If is selected is a Boolean value, just leave it uh, as this, okay? And that, that just makes your code um, easier to read, okay? Um, yeah, numeric values, um, again, for numeric values, adding a word that describes what it is um, is going to be uh, better. So rather than just saying rows is equal to three, um, better indications would be something like uh, minimum min rows or max rows or total rows or current row or something like that, right? Some kind of descriptive word that gives us a little bit of the uh, the thing. Okay. Again, this is hard, um, and I personally, you know, when like I'm I'm personally not going to be grading your homework, and uh, the grader is not going to be looking for this in your um, 
in your homework when you when it, when he's grading. But um, but this is just for your own sake to kind of establish good habits, um, just so that when you read your own code in the future. Um, you can read it and follow along and not get frustrated <laughs> reading your own code. Um, and that's, uh, that's that. Okay. Um, also when it comes to like naming functions, okay, function names, um, we like to think of functions as kind of verbs. And so functions that modify an object should be, um, an action verb. Um, whereas some functions, don't uh, modify an object, um, but will kind of return a modified version of the object, okay? And in that case, um, use a passive form of the verb, okay? So, um, so for example, a function that will take a list and modify it by sorting it, you can say that function should be called sort, okay? But if a function that takes a list doesn't modify it, but gives returns back uh, a sorted copy or sorted version of the list, you can call that sorted, okay? And so um, a lot of things in base Python already follow some of these best practices um, as already, okay? So I just want to show you a couple of examples and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up here. So we haven't um, covered lists and things like that, but uh, here I've created a list uh, called car brand names. In it, it, it has uh, Ford, BMW, Volvo, Toyota. It's just these strings. And there is a method, that uh, a list method called uh, sort. And you can call dot sort. And dot sort, when called on this object, car brand names, will take that object and actually modify it. And then I can ask, what are car brand names? <coughs> after we've done the sorting operation and um, and it will be sorted in alphabetical order. <clears throat> Whereas um, if I do uh, an, I create a new um, list called car brand names with Chevy, Audi, and Hondi, Honda on it, I'm sorry, <clears throat> I can get back a sorted version of the list um, but this sorted version does not modify the original list. And so um, in alphabetical order, it's um, Audi, Chevrolet, and Honda. But, um, but the original list, car brand names, uh, is unmodified, OK? So these are just kind of examples of Python implementing these functions in a way and naming them in a way that, that kind of makes sense. Um, again, here's our original thing. If you try to do something like car brand names sorted, this is uh, an attribute or method that doesn't exist, and so we get uh, an error, um, and then there's actually a function. Um, the function sort doesn't exist in uh, kind of uh, as a standalone function, um, so that you know we get a name error and says that thing is not defined. But they do exist as a sort does exist as a um, a method that applies or an ad, a method uh, that applies to lists, um, and sorted is a uh, a function that exists out here and can be applied there. Okay, let me give you your last view quiz answer. Last view quiz answer is the letter E, E as an elephant. Um, and we'll just uh, wrap it up here a little bit early. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, and we will see you in class on Wednesday. <laughs>